we're cleaning up and the one fella says, well, look at this. I'm like, what is that? It's no way it's a wood duck. Oh yeah, it was classic. Just pile them up right about in there. When we're out spotting, all the details and all of the elements of the birds that we're watching have to come together for us to want to pursue that the next morning or that afternoon and execute a hunt. So if any one of those elements change for whatever reason, or we feel that there's something amiss, we pull the pin and we just go, no, we're not doing that hunt. It's not right for tomorrow morning. When the guides say, hey, Claudio, I can't do this one, I'm out. That usually throws us all into a bit of a scramble because it's like, whoa, Corchy Jason had a backup, pulled a pin on one, slid over to his other one. This morning we're hunting out of the big bush blinds. They're stand-up blinds, uh, a lot easier to shoot out of for the, for the hunters. So what we're doing now is we're just getting them into position according to the wind direction, which way the birds will be approaching the, the, uh, the spread. They're just like a Christmas tree that you set up at Christmas, right? So what I would like a couple guys to do is fluff them up. So you bend these all out, the arms, right? Make it as bushy yeah. and as big, as fluffy as you possibly can, all the way around. One goes on each corner, so they just simply slide in. Okay. okay. Wow. And then all the way along the back, and the, not the front though, the front is okay, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So if somebody can do that for me. Okay. And I'll start putting decoys out. Safety first. There's a few out there. Mostly ducks. This isn't a day roost. This is uh, just a puddle in the field that uh, sometimes they're using. This is a full section, 640 acres of peas. Great big field. We had our meeting and we decided that this would be a target uh, for a morning hunt. What about the, the 640? Awesome. Oh, really? Super combo. And we don't have it, do I we? have it. Yeah, I have it. Okay, with the decoy spread, I typically run either, uh, if it's high wind, I'll do a, a J pattern. If we got hardly any wind this morning, so I can't control really which way the birds are going to come in. Um, so we'll probably just end up doing a, a fairly wide, lazy U, or I might do even an X pattern. Um, just gives the birds two or three different spots to, to land. Um, because no wind, they can come in any direction. So we'll, we'll start setting those up right now. The boys are just finishing off the, uh, the blinds. They look pretty good. And we'll go from there. I'm just generally throwing them out into a pattern. And what I like to do is I'll get the hunters starting to put the stakes in and put the decoys on top. And then as it gets a little bit lighter, then I'll start fine tuning, I guess you can call it the, the spread, uh, once I can see a little bit more. Oh, there's some in the field right here, the, the field that we can't hunt. There's no hunting and the darn birds are in there. But the roost is just, oh, not very far. So I bet you they're just jumping out for a quick bite and hopefully they're gonna filter over into our field. Every guide has to have at least one hunt, if not two, and a couple in your back pocket in case things go sideways. And when, when, I, when I say things go sideways, we just seen it. My birds are in the wrong field, right? And so I think it's gonna turn out and we'll, we'll know in the next 45 minutes. And so all of a sudden I might have to say, hey, things went sideways. The birds aren't doing what they've been doing. I don't feel comfortable. I phone Claudio or whoever's quarterbacking the group of guides tonight and say, hey, this doesn't look that good. I don't feel that safe. I check my other one. My other one's a little light. What else do we got going? Now Claudio then will get on the phone and, and start phoning the guides and say okay what do you have what do you have what do you have yeah, everyone's got to have at least one if not two and maybe not permission but you know in the back of a mind there is a hunt there so if we have to run out do a road trip we call it to, to double check it and get permission on it and 
at least it's a hunt that we can hunt, right? That we know that there's birds there. Because we never put clients in to a situation where we feel we can't kill birds. Um, I had a couple hunts that um, the landowner was holding for either his neighbor, <laughs> friends, or whatever. So in my area, the birds were stacking up and stacking up, and, and, and it was sucking everything in the county into this one field. And so I didn't have other hunts around that area, right? Until they finally shot it yesterday, Saturday. So now, today, the birds are scattered more, so now there's a hunt there, there's a hunt there, there's a hunt there, right? So that kind of, that hurts an area when that happens. When a field gets just too big and then they're not hunting it. Because it sat here for, I bet you, about a week. This was one that was building. Hey, go kill him. So just like that, the hunt grows. So this is gonna be, this may be even a target if our other hunt uh, the 640 hunt, the full section hunt isn't going, this would be a good option. And now, bang, now there's another hunt, just like that. 90% are speckle bellies. We have a big influctuation right now with speckle bellies. Okay. Hello? <laughs> Mr. Hungaro. Good, good. Uh, not, not much flying yet, um, they're in, uh, Mike's pretty hard here, but the roost is right in the field, right, which is no big deal, but they're just flipping out, right, but it's about twice the size as it was this morning. Yeah, absolutely, not many ducks, it's just a big speckle hunt. The 640 wasn't rocking when we went there, there was a few, but they just flipped out into dugs. There's maybe 75 speckle bellies and dugs. So we're just heading back there now to check out the target hunt and make 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 sure it's going. And if it's not, uh, we'll let you know. So I'll I'll phone you in about 10 minutes. Okay, 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 bye. All right, that was the boss man, Mr. Ungaro, making sure everything's going okay with the target hunts. Oh wait, let's keep cruising. So we're just gonna drive down and see exactly what's going on. Not good at all. We'll see how many actually go in there. But see, they want to go to our field, but there's just a few that landed in the other field that we can't hunt in and they all just get sucked into them. They decoy into them. Well, we're just coming back to the target hunt, the 640, and uh, those darn birds are going into the field right next to it that we don't have permission and we can't get permission on it. I missed that, I missed that whole first part. Say that again, what, what? geese coming off the roost they're seeing these birds go down in the field and feeding in the field and they're just all piling into ducks now so oh. i don't feel very obviously uh no comfortable no obviously um, not well pull the pin on that one obviously yeah on this hunt well yeah they're not even in the 640. uh-huh yeah mike's is rocking the eagle scared them up but they all went back down you know, I'm okay over here. I can hunt mics. Yeah. But I, Harold's had more ducks on it. Yeah. 
let's say, see these birds here, Evan, that even some went, some did cross the road and went into the 640. Yeah. And now, now they're coming back to hey. Doug's. Oh, well, what do you do, right? Just got to play with the cards we've been dealt. I, anyways, okay, so I'm pulling the pin on this one, obviously. All right. I'll still be okay as far as the team goes. How much did that stress you out, you know? Wow, well, yeah, huge. Look yeah. Huge yeah. stress, bad, bad, bad. Yeah, right on. As soon as we rolled up on him, it was, uh, wasn't looking good. All it took was two flights to go in, and the, you've seen it, and the game was over, right? Because Doug's is before the 640. Yeah. Between the roost and the 640, right? But well, I, I had... why they do that. I had one kind of go sideways here, too. You know what? I you wouldn't be surprised, though, uh, coming back to this one just before dark. We're going to get out of here right now. There's still piles coming off the roost. Like, I've got another thousand birds in the air coming over here. I just bumped into some ducks on a puddle. Oh. Yes, I think. Well, that's a bonus. Yeah, it's always a bonus. Okay, I'll keep them with me and we'll hunt another one. All right, good luck. Okay. Let me know. Okay. Bye. Yep, bye. Bye. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. look what I found. Look at that. Bunch of ducks. On this side of the road here is the section of peas that the birds have been feeding in for two days watching them now on this side of the road is a piece that we can't hunt and the roost is on the other side of this field here so this field's between our field and the roost now the birds have been in this one obviously this one doesn't look good tonight so that's how fast things can change in this bird guiding occupation it's crazy uh, because this one now the birds uh, went into a different field and that was the uh, the target hunt for tomorrow morning we aborted times at seven o'clock so we got an hour of light still left so we notified all the other guides just to make sure everybody's on alert and uh, I'm gonna go check these other two hunts that I have they look good for the last day so as long as they're happening when we go there we'll be hunting one of them it goes from being calm right on to oh no the birds aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing what we want them to do and now it's like ah but... this one here is all big honkers big canada geese I've got a oh, couple hundred at least out there. There's more coming in. And uh, this morning there was a good number of ducks feeding in there too. So we'll just hang out here for 15 minutes or so and just see exactly what comes into the field, if it's going to get any bigger. And this one's looking not too bad. I'm just hoping the ducks are going to show up. If the ducks show up, I'll probably end up hunting this one. Yeah, go yeah, my other one, there's a couple hundred big cans in it. The ducks haven't showed up yet. And then uh, this morning, though, there is 400 ducks in here with them, too. But they haven't quite shown up yet. Well, ducks just started. Yeah, there. everything's late tonight. That's the pea field? Yeah. Yeah. Here are my ducks coming now. Yeah, there's a few more ducks in there. <clears throat> I think there's enough in there to get her done. We'll just sit here for a little bit longer and see how many more flights come in. That was uh, CO. Just uh, wants to make sure that everything is copacetic, and it is. Jason Modine. Hey. How's it looking? Um, the cans, uh, the ducks are starting to pile in there pretty good. I bet you I got, oh, I know, 400 or so. Oh, cool. Yeah, you never want to push one through, but, you know, is it an afternoon option? I mean, there's specs, right? We can bump them. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. If I hunt the honks in the morning uh -huh. and then hunt the speckle belly tomorrow night. Yeah, that's, what, that's how I would play that one out for sure. Yeah, exactly. So you're good to go? See you at the camp. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I think we'll hunt this one in the morning. Mel, Mel, go ahead. 
Is everybody good to go? We are good to go. Jay's got two options, and Dustin's dropping the pin. Jay, because, uh... I'm going to make sure where these things go to roost. Oh, I would. You may as well watch them. Ryan was trying to call me. Can you call him and just let him know what's going on? Yeah, I can. I, uh, if anything goes haywire, you uh, uh, either text me or Ryan. Oh, I'll call you. Ryan, well, no, no, but I mean, my phone's just about dead, so... If you can't get a hold of me, just text Ryan. He knows where I'm sitting. Okay. So. Between these two hunts now, what I'll do for tomorrow is I'll come and hunt this one, and we'll pull Mel over to watch the other hunt, the one with all the speckle bellies on it and not a lot of ducks. And then either I'll hunt that or Mel will hunt that tomorrow night. But between the two hunts, we'll get that one group should get that one group a full limit of geese and a full limit of ducks so it's a perfect day when we drove down here earlier we kind of marked it at the approach straight out the birds were i couldn't mark it from the, the south because of uh, there's just no roads there so now we'll get out and look for some fresh poop and feathers and put the steak in and we're done I'm sure they are up on this plateau. Squishy, squishy. That's what I thought. They were right up on this plateau. For good luck. For tomorrow. That's too bad. We're going to have a south. The wind finder says a southwest wind tomorrow. It's too bad with those trees right there. If it wasn't an, if it was a nice north wind or a northwest wind like we usually have, I could put that willow blind right off of that. It would blend right in. But they're used to seeing those trees flying over those trees, so the willow blind out here is going to be fine too. So there we go. See you in the morning. Good night. Jason Modine, totally professional. Unbelievable experience, and probably one of the best bird hunters you'll ever lay your eyes on. Clients love him, dedicated, and if there's one thing he loves to do, he loves to decoy those big candies. I mean, it, you know, I love to do the duck hunts, that's my thing. He loves those big Canada geese. He just loves seeing them bow up and come in and you know, he talks about it all the time, how it's his biggest challenge is to get those things to decoy and do it. I mean, he's, I would say he's our Canada Goose Specialist. That guy right now, he's good at it. So just a, a really good guy who works hard, pays a lot of attention to detail. And uh, it's interesting because just the other day, uh, one of our clients said, you know, that Jason is, is a technician. And that's pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. And I would have to agree. Good hunt, guys. Good hunt. What did we shoot this morning? A wood duck in the field. With, with a bunch Un of mallards. And they came in with the mallards. Yeah. And he did. Yeah, a drake wood duck. Unbelievable. I've never yeah. heard or seen such a thing. Especially out in western Canada, we don't get those wood ducks. That's Can we uh, help in unloading the birds? That's something else. Can we do that? Sure, if you guys want to, you don't need to. I hang them up out there on the sure. nails. Sure, there's another big one. Oh. There's a Man. nice bird. Pretty big pile. Great looking ducks. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's no, neat, for sure, especially for him to come out to the field and for him to come out and feed with the mallards in a pea field, that's something else. Got to get him mounted and put him in the lodge. We got to get this thing mounted. You'll never shoot one of these again. Never will that get shot again here.
That is wicked, that dude. Is cool. <laughs> I know. I'm going to keep I've, them. I've only seen one in a pond in my life. In Burns Camp, we had one in the decoys. <sighs> Kill the woody! And yeah. they didn't cut a feather. Yeah. No, he came in with the mallards and wanted to feed in the field. And I, I didn't realize until I came back with the truck and one of the fellows said, Look at this. And what? No way. I've actually. That's a trophy. I've actually never held one of these. I've never either. No. Nope. We don't get them out here. That's the fourth one in 21 years. They shot a Woody. <laughs> Are you kidding? No, it's pretty good. Wow. Deep. How was the hunt, guys? Great. Just made a three and a half inch oh. show. <laughs> wow. Check it out. Let me give you a little bit of history on these uh, on the wood ducks at the Ongaro Lodge. I guided a hunt with Bob Pfeffer, who's now dead. This would have been in 1995. We shot two on the same hunt. The following year, two miles south of the lodge, we shot one on opening day with Charlie Swicord from South Carolina. And now this. Wow. Four wood ducks in 21 years. That's amazing. That is so cool. They have, like, you know how widgeon have a square tail? Yeah. These ones have even a more pronounced square tail. It's unmistakable if you've, if you've had the opportunity to see more than one, you know? climbed under the blind, and the guys, because I was all out, and he climbed under the blind, and he came out the other side, I guess. And so I came back. They said, did you get that cripple? And there was another cripple out there. Yeah, I got him. I got him. No problem. We're cleaning up, and the one fella says, well, look at this. I'm like, what is that? No way. It's a wood duck. Oh, yeah. It was classic. We might have to get this one mounted. Well, the ones I had, they're so old and beat up from, you know. Wow, cool. Yeah, nice, amazing how plumed out they are. Good. Good hunt, though? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Good? Dustin, you had a good one, hey? Yeah. Good? Nice. Well, what do you think? Well, 